small crossovers, mini SUVs, jacked up super minis, call them what you will, they are hugely popular right now. But who does them best? Is it Suzuki with its Vitara, Honda with its HRV, or how about Peugeot and its recently updated 2008? Now, if you're wondering where the Mazda CX-3, the Nissan Juke and Renault Captra are, well, they're not invited because they're not as good as these three cars. To help you decide which of these three suits you, I'm going to critique their cabins. Oh my God, the plastics, they're just awful. Compare their designs. The lion has been moved from the bonnet to their, who knew, who cares? See how practical they are. And look at this. Now that's magic. And test what they like to drive. <laughs> it's actually a really, really fun little car. But first, let's talk about prices. So, the Peugeot has the lowest starting price of £13,615, then the Suzuki at £13,999, while the Honda is quite a bit more expensive at £18,495. However, make sure you click on the pop-out banner in the top right-hand corner of the screen to see what deals you can get on these or any cars and buy a price you're confident in through CarWow. On average, people save £3,600 on a new car through carwow.co.uk. And when you compare prices, power outputs and equipment levels, it's the Suzuki Vitara which works out the best value of these three cars overall. This is actually the range topping S version, but you don't want it because it costs over 20 grand and it doesn't make financial sense at all. You're better off spending 17 grand on the SZT, the mid-spec model, because it's got all you really need, such as this infotainment screen with satellite navigation. And I do find this system, on the whole, a lot easier to use than those in the other two cars. And anyway, you don't want to be spending 20 grand on this car, because that's Volkswagen Golf money. And then you'll get in this and go, oh my God, the plastics, they're just awful. In fact, they're so rough up here, I think I can farm on nails on them. The yeah, I can. This is a shame as the cabin design is nice and simple and very straightforward. However, it's a little bit meh when you compare it to the futuristic Honda HRV. All its cabin materials feel the most robust of the three cars here. And then there are cool features such as the driving dials which appear when you turn the ignition on and the touchscreen control panel for the climate control. The trouble is, it's not actually that easy to use. So because there's no physical buttons, you, you, you're not sure what you're pressing. So you have to look down to see what you're doing. And that means more time with your eyes off the road. And then there's the infotainment system, which, well, God, I just find it so confusing. And I don't have the patience to figure out what to do with it. You know, life is just too short. The 2008 is already halfway through its six year life, hence the recent revamp. However, very little has changed inside the car, so it's still fairly nice to look at, but not necessarily great to use. Now, there's one thing on this car which could instantly rule it out for some people. So depending on your ideal driving position, the steering wheel can sometimes completely obscure the dials, which obviously isn't a good thing. Then there's the infotainment system. Now, it is slightly better to use than the one in the Honda, but it's still not great, though it does come with stuff like Apple CarPlay and MirrorLink for your mobile phone. The majority of the Peugeot's changes are on the outside, so there's scuff plates and wheel arch extensions, plus darkened headlamps and a set of 3D tail lamps. But that's not all. There's a new larger, bolder grille and you can get it in black, plus the line has been moved from the bonnet to there. Who knew? Who cares? No one. That's who. Because despite the changes, the 2008 just doesn't have the presence of the boxy Suzuki Vitara, which looks even more purposeful in sporty S trim. Also, the Peugeot doesn't have the futuristic crossover lines of the interesting looking Honda HRV, which does that cool thing of disguising its rear door handles. Now, this car is great if you have to deal with a baby seat because this door opens nice and wide and there's loads of space back here. And look at this. Now, that's magic. Now, it is actually magic. Honda calls these magic seats because well, no other car brand does this. And the space in the back, actually at first, if you look down there, you've got quite a lot of knee room, but headroom is really tight and taller adults will struggle in the back of this car. It's really bad with three in the back due to the narrow body and high center seat. And that's a shame as leg and foot room is actually really good. So too are cubby spaces, while the boot is the biggest of these three cars by far, whatever configuration it's in. That's not to say the Suzuki's boot is tiny, it's actually fairly decent and it's got some nice touches as well. For instance, it's the only car here where you can store the parcel shelf out the way underneath the false floor and you also get a, well, no load lip and there's some cubby spaces here as well. 
the Suzuki's low capacity is enough for most people, though it does trail the Peugeot and the Honda slightly. Still, it is the best for carrying people, as the boxy shape means plenty of head and leg room, and it's the most bearable with three in the back. It's just a shame the narrow rear door opening makes it tougher than the rest to fit a child seat. And while the cubbies are okay, the glove box is small. And that brings me on to something that really annoys me about the 2008 and Peugeots in general. So when they're converting the car to right-hand drive, they don't bother to move the fuse box across. And so for UK cars, you get a really small glove box. I mean, you can, you can almost sense their French contempt for us Brits. Ah, oh, the wrong side of the road driving rosbits. Yeah. Apart from this, the cubby spaces are rather good, plus you can slide and recline the seats in the 2008. Unfortunately, larger adults will struggle for headroom, and the narrow body means the 2008 is the worst for travelling three up in the back. Still, the boot is impressive with a wide opening, low load height and flat floor with the seats down, and it only trials the Honda slightly for load lugging ability. It's not so good for a baby seat though, due to the narrow door opening and hidden Isofix anchors. Now, before we go into the driving, there is something you should know. The Peugeot and the Honda are both frauds, as they are front wheel drive only, though the Peugeot does have a special traction control system for slippery services. However, the Suzuki Vitara is the only model here which you can also get with all wheel drive. But does this really matter? To find out, I drove the Suzuki through an off-road course, which is about as extreme as any owners are ever really going to encounter, and the other two cars tried to follow me. I went up slopes and through some mud, but I was never able to shake the Peugeot nor the Honda. They managed to plod on regardless of being just front-wheel drive. So, I gave up. Well... It looks like they're all still with me, so I'm not really feeling the benefit of this car's all-wheel drive system. Really though, how these cars compare on the road is what actually matters. And it's here where, rather surprisingly, the Vitara stands out. Now I'm going to tell you right from the off, I love driving this Suzuki Vitara. So, <laughs> it's actually a really, really fun little car to chuck around. I mean, it's in a completely different lead to the other two in terms of driving dynamics. It's, it's like a little sporty car, and, and the good thing is you can really push it to its limit rather than in some sports cars where you actually end up pushing yourself to your own limit. So you can have fun safely. Another thing I like about it is that it generally feels like a small SUV rather than some wishy-washy crossover. It just seems chunky, square, and squat. I like this engine, this is the 1.4 litre turbo petrol. It's very good, it spins up nicely, and I'm averaging 41 miles per gallon. But you don't want to get this engine because it's just too expensive. If you want the 1.6 litre petrol, just the normal natural aspirated engine, that's nippy enough, and it keeps the car's cost down. And this is supposed to be a cheap and cheerful car, which is exactly what it is. Coming from the Suzuki into this Honda, you do notice this car isn't quite as much fun to drive. It's not as gripping. It doesn't encourage you to hoon it around, but it is slightly more comfortable. The only complaint I have about the ride is that it does fidget a little bit over bumps, but on the whole, nice and relaxing. And it's not as noisy as the Suzuki. Well, I say that, it's not as noisy as the Suzuki normally, but if you put your foot down in this one, it is. And that's because this one's the CVT automatic and it makes a horrible noise when you accelerate. Get the manual version of the HRV, it's much better, the gearbox is lovely, and it doesn't make that horrible noise. Another slight complaint I have about this car is that the rear visibility isn't quite as good as you might expect for this kind of car. You've got quite a fat rear pillar, and that creates a bit of a blind spot when you're looking over your shoulder like that to pull out at junctions. As for economy, I only managed 38.9 miles per gallon from this 1.5 litre automatic HRV. Would the Peugeot do any better? Well, yes. In this car, I managed a respectable 44 miles per gallon. This is a little 1.2 litre turbo petrol, and it's a three-cylinder, and normally I don't like them that much. But this one goes really well, and doesn't make too much of a noise either. Now, back to back in this car, compared to the other two, you do notice a few things immediately. The first is that it just doesn't have that sporty edge to it in the same way that the Suzuki Vitara does. Also, the controls, they're just not as slick or as responsive as they are in the Honda. But there are a few things I like about this, and one is the suspension. So it's nice and supple. It does a great job of dealing with bumps, and that makes this car brilliant for driving around town and coping with potholes and speed humps and stuff like that. Another thing I noticed, though, is that at speed, you do get quite a bit of wind whistle. But on the whole, this is a very relaxing car to travel in. 
So then, where does all that leave us? Well, the Peugeot 2008, it looks the poshest inside. The Honda HRV, it's the most innovative, but it's a Suzuki Vitara with its cheeky charm, its fun driving experience, its chunky looks, its decent practicality, and above all else, its unbeatable value, which wins this test. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, share it, and subscribe to our channel. And if you click over there, you can watch our detailed individual reviews of the Suzuki Vitara, the Peugeot 2008, and the Honda HRV. Now, did you know that in Japan, the Vitara is actually called the Escudo?